Hey guys, Thunder E here, and we are back with the Galaxy S22 Ultra Snapdragon versus the Galaxy S22 Ultra Exynos. Now, this is all about gaming and gaming performance. And if you guys remember, I did this video closer to around lunch, so almost about two months ago, and one of our big results was the fact that, yes, all of the games were not optimized. But we can clearly see that optimization is probably the biggest factor that gives Snapdragon uh, the edge with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So I decided to check back a couple months after launch to see where we are with optimization for, for some of the key games that we like. So of course that will be Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG Mobile, as well as also Genshin Impact and the new entry into the business, Apex Legends Mobile. So let's go ahead and take a look at both devices. Now, both of them are S22 Ultras. Now my Exynos version is the green, my, my Snapdragon is black, but I've got this really cool case, uh, which I want to actually thank Technical T4, but this is an awesome case. I have a link for you guys down below. That being said though, they are similar and different. They have the same camera modules, but they do have different processors inside. Yes, the batteries are the same, charging is the same speed, all that fun stuff, but we've got a Snapdragon um, 8 Gen 1 right here in the Snapdragon version, and we have an Exynos, I believe 2200, on this device. So these are two different devices in terms of uh, performance. So let's start off with our very first game because I know you guys wanna actually see what this actually means here. Now, both devices, I'm gonna be running Call of Duty, but here's something that's quite interesting off the bat for Call of Duty. So with the Exynos version, when you are playing Call of Duty, uh, you only have a limited choices in terms of graphical performance. So you go into your graphic settings, you can see I can either go max high, uh, basically high in graphics quality and max in, of course, frame rate, or I can go very high in graphics quality and of course, very high in frame rate. So I cannot max it out all the way, which is a bit of a bummer and I really didn't like it with this device. Now, when I ran this game at very, at high graphics and max uh, frame rate on the Exynos version, I got 60 frames per second. But again, this is a base game we use for most of our benchmarks. And the fact that I cannot still run Call of Duty on here, Call of Duty Mobile on the Exynos version at the same rate as I do on the Snapdragon version to me is not good so that is a bit of a downer there and i have to actually say look snapdragon wins let's go ahead and check our very next game and of course this is pubg mobile this is a game a lot of people love to play it's a really big game and here we jump into the graphic settings and we clearly see a huge disadvantage so clearly we know on the snapdragon version we get of course ultra hd ultra uh that gives us what 40 frames per second, and Smooth Extreme gives us 60 frames per second. So what about the Exynos? What do we get there? Well, Exynos we get, we can do Smooth High, and we can't do Ultra HD Ultra. We can't do HDR, we can only do HD in High. So already off the bat, I'm not even gonna run the benchmarks on this because I cannot run on the best settings possible that I can. So right now you have two Galaxy devices that cannot run two of the biggest games at the same level for both of them. And that is pretty huge. So things are not looking good guys for the Exynos version, but we still have two more games. So let's go ahead and check out Genshin Impact. Now Genshin we know is not a well optimized game. That is the standard. You probably need a gaming device, uh, a gaming smartphone to reach the maximum of course, uh, performance. But both games, we can run it at the maximum setting, which of course is 60 frames per second. And with this, which is actually pretty cool, is the fact that both of them also are running at almost the same frame rates. With the Galaxy, uh, with the Snapdragon having the slight edge at 48 frames per second, while the Exynos version is at 46 frames per second, when we play for about 15 minutes of gameplay. So I'll say they're really close together, which is something that actually is impressive. I'm glad to see at least in Genshin Impact, both can be played at the same level. And finally, 
The newest game out of all of them is Apex Legends Mobile. I'm really loving this game, guys. This has some great gameplay. Uh, it feels like Apex. I've been winning some games, by the way, which is great for me. Uh, but that being said, though, this is a brand new game. It's got new graphic settings, uh, which both of them can actually do. And what is pretty interesting here is you can actually go through the maximum for each. Now, of course, the best settings for your best F F FPS is um, a very high and Ultra HD, or in this case, I ran it Ultra HD Extreme HD. And for both devices, I got almost close to the same in terms of FPSs. I was getting um, 53 frames per second for the Snapdragon and around 50, 50, 52 for the uh, Exynos. So that's also pretty close here. So it seems at least with Genshin Impact and um, of course, Apex Legend Mobile, that we're getting almost the same performance from both which is nice, but that also leaves the fact that we have two other of the most popular games that you cannot run them at the highest setting. While Call of Duty is a little bit closer with um, PUBG Mobile, it's just nowhere close, uh, which kind of brings me to the point of what this whole video is about. Now, we know Samsung has been having multiple different processors within their devices. Now, it's quite clear that if you're in Europe, you're gonna get the Exynos version and the rest of the world, you're most likely gonna get the Snapdragon version. And honestly, it still stands to back in that if you're gonna be getting Galaxy S22 Ultra, you should get the Snapdragon version, which is this one right here. Um, if you're gonna be doing any kind of gaming for a long period of time, wanna play at the best settings possible. Now that's not saying that the Exynos version cannot game like that, um, and cannot game properly, you just cannot go to the maximum or the best uh, settings for your frames per second, at least for a few games, especially when you're looking at Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG Mobile. So there it is, guys. Let me know what you think. Do you think that mm, it really doesn't matter? Or are you kind of pissed and saying, look, Samsung, we want one processor. Go with Snapdragon if you want to get the best performance or you know what, maybe build your own thing and improve Exynos and let's see something that actually does either the same or better. They have choices, but you guys can speak. This is Thunder E saying thank you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you want to pick up any of these devices, especially the Snapdragon version, use the link down below. This is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment.